on uh, to item B. We'll close public comment. Uh, second reading, consideration and action on ordinance for the adop adoption of the operating and capital improvement budget for fiscal year 2013. Um, we had a special called meeting on June 29th to adopt a budget for fiscal year 2013. After reviewing the videotape as chair, I made the decision that the motion as made was unclear um, after discussing it with staff and reviewing the videotape. And so under Robert's Rules of Order, 11th edition, a motion that's in unclear can be is considered an improper motion and can be uh, nulled and voided. And so we have placed this back on our agenda tonight for a second reading. Is there a motion under item number B? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the ordinance. Judge me read it. Just, just the heading, and if you have a budget that you want to reference. Yes, it'll be the budget that we received on July 3rd from staff as Exhibit A. And um, to adopt the fiscal year 2012-2013 budget of the city of Snellville, Georgia, approving the appropriation of revenues and listed expenditures, expenses, and all other items of revenue anticipation and entries for all city funds as shown in the financial compilation attached as Exhibit A and prohibited prohibiting expenditures or expenses from exceeding the actual funding available. Whereas sound government operations require a budget for the general fund and all other funds of the city of Snellville in order to plan and financing of services to the residents of the city of Snellville, and whereas Title 36, Chapter 81, Article 1 of the Official Code of Georgia annotated requires a balanced budget for the city's fiscal year, which runs... Mr. Woods, I don't believe it's necessary to read the whole thing into the agenda. If you'll just read the heading, is that your motion is to adopt that ordinance? I'd ask the city attorney for his read. That, does that suffice it to you, sir? Do you, you have a written form that you're proposing? Yes, sir. And, and are there any modifications to the form that council's looked at? This is the last one that we received from council. Okay, the we yellow marked them. version, you're using that version? This is the version we're using, correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think everybody's aware of, okay. of the content of that motion. That's my motion. And the reading of the title does suffice to the reading of the ordinance. So there is a motion to approve the fiscal year 2013 budget as uh, submitted by staff on July 3rd, 2012 and attached. Uh, there are copies made in the back of the room for the public that would like to review it attached as Exhibit A. Is there a second to that motion? Second. There is a second by Councilman Emanuel. Is there a discussion? Yes. Um, basically what, what we're doing here, um, I know many of you have watched uh, the video of the 29th which laid out what we wanted to accomplish. Basically, all this does is do that. We, what bottom line is, we are now put in money from our savings account, as you, so to speak, to cover expenses in 2013 that we are anticipating, those being a $16,900 repair to a pavilion over in Briscoe Park, which we've been paid for by the insurance company. So we're going to take the money from the insurance company that's in savings, use that to pay for that. And then there's $426,000 that was in the original budget for uh, the LCI project, which is the road and streetscape along Henry Clower, parts of Wisteria, and Oak Road. I didn't feel it was uh, incumbent upon us to tax the, the citizens of Snowville that $426,000 in 2013 when we had the money in the savings account from SDS plus accumulated savings. So there was no reason to tax you for it if we could take the money from that account and pay for it. So that, this, this budget does that. Another line item was that um, the, uh, there was a $99,000 fund transfer into the stormwater fund, which was unnecessary. This eliminates that. And then uh, finally, it allows us to reduce um, our millage rate uh, so the property taxes will be decreased in the city approximately 14 percent. So all this does is take those things that we wanted to do on Friday the 29th, puts them in the right form, and um, we can adopt it with staff feeling comfortable that it's correct and those of us who uh, worked on this to make that correction corrected. Additional comment? Um, you think you have trouble running your house? Try a budget. <laughs> It's about 40 pages. Uh, 
everything you can think of that the city spends and takes in is in it. A lot of people worked very hard on it. I think we have an excellent budget for the citizens of Snellville. There's <clears throat> surprisingly enough been some controversy over it, but uh, I think we've got everything solved. I think we have a good budget. I think you'll see the benefits of that budget in the coming year. Um, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem if you would make a friendly amendment to the budget by um, setting aside uh, fifty thousand dollars to place monumental signs into the city, a welcome sign and a, and a couple of monumental signs. They would look similar to that. Uh, that would give us an indication of when we come in into the city. It's uh, uh, it may not be exactly this rendering here, but that would be a start to allow us to have some of the uh, monuments that we lack. I think that we can amend the budget at a future date to do that if that's, if that's what you'd like, but um, I think there's been enough controversy about this budget. We've got the form in front of us. As you know, the budget can be amended any time. I'd certainly support that but I don't think we need to mess with what we have in front of us. No, no, no need to add any further confusion than we have to this point. I'd like to add uh, one, one other clarification uh, from our city attorney. Um, there was some discussion about the budget before we got in here, and I know there were some individual one-to-one -one meetings uh, in the hallway discussing this. Has this budget that we just read, has, uh, or this resolution that we just read, is the resolution that indicates the budget that was just received by um, by the uh, by the staff recently that includes all the missing items that were missing from before? Um, Mr. Sabah, the the I unfortunately missed the 29th meeting. I, I sort of take some responsibility for the for the confusion, um, but but the the one that you have in front of you is Exhibit A. Is, uh, is is a written document that took into account all of the motion amendments that were made uh, in the meeting on the 29th. And then uh, your staff uh, uh, accountant uh, took those and, and what you're looking for in a budget is that it balances. And so in this case, the staff took it and made sure that the incorporation of those items that were changed from the original on the 29th were incorporated correctly. And so it had staff endorsement of, of the form, which was a key ingredient to eliminating confusion. Uh, it has all the funds included. And so it, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it's just it's all inclusive in terms of, of uh, creating the budget that was really intended on the 29th, is, is what I can say. I do agree with, with uh, uh, Mr. Witts. In, in that not modifying the form now is probably a, a good recommendation because uh, we're we're one step in trying to really clarify what occurred on the 29th and and so you can always go back and amend so uh, the key the key to me was just making sure that our form was right that you have the division of authority uh, when it comes to who has charge over amendments that's statutorily required uh, all the budgets that y'all have looked at met the qualifications of being legal because they balanced and so it's it, then it becomes a matter of political issues with regard to how you utilize the funds coming up with a budget that balances that everybody agrees on is the prop is is a fully set out including salary increases which are most important because you won't go back and really approve salaries again unless you specifically modify them along the way this is the this is the control document when it comes to salary so all of those things have been T's crossed and I's dotted and we, we, we walked through the process to make sure we were getting the amendments done correctly the way everybody wanted them done and that there was clarity in the in the um, uh, funds to make sure it was all inclusive and so it, so it's got my recommendation in terms of form it's got staff recommendation in terms of form incorporating what was intended on the 29th so I hope that answers the question yeah you give you give a, an ex, ex a good explanation. Um, if I may direct this question again now, one more time to Chief uh, uh, Whitehead. I, I know, Chief, you're under the uh, under the knife, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see you here, sitting at that corner there, giving us that anchor. Appreciate you coming back. Um, 
uh, I just want, I want your thoughts on this resolution that was just read by Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Witts, and uh, the budget associated with it. It, it. Based on everything that's prepared, the uh, amendment is the corrected budget with, that should accurately reflect the um, everything that operates the city financially. So it is a good budget. Additional comments? Yes, please. Not to rehash some of the stuff from Friday night, but the budget essentially is the one that we just, we did Friday night. That's exactly what we were trying to do. There wasn't any desire, any need, any want to do anything but pass a good budget that represented good value and savings to our citizens. Simple as that. Nobody tried to do anything any different. What you got tonight's the same thing exactly the same thing and I support tonight I, I'm and again like Mayor Pro Tem Witts I can't support just throwing on the table $50,000 amendment for something I've just seen it's not to say that I won't support it once I learn more about it but to throw something out like that just to sight unseen is not uh, not exactly what I'm going to be excited about supporting so that portion of it I wouldn't support For all of you standing out there, sitting out there saying, what is going on? That's how we kind of felt Friday night. So let's just try to clarify a few things. Um, if you can put up the, the second piece of paper. Um, I think Mayor Pro Tem Witts proposed a budget Friday, and, and his attempts may have been clear, uh, but what we did or what we didn't do maybe wasn't clear. And so when, co when cooler heads prevailed uh, last week, staff got together, and I believe Mayor Pro Tem Witts and Maybe Councilman Emanuel had an opportunity to meet with staff and make sure that what we actually proposed, what they were actually proposing, what we actually are voting on is in front of mayor and council. If you could not put the top section up, if you could put just the bot, uh, the number two. Could you move it forward so you can just see number two? Um, the, no, if you can just see number two. The, the difference is that the originally the LCI project and the pavilion repairs were omitted and that wasn't anybody's intent, I don't think. The intent was to pay for that from surplus funds. So those have been put back in the budget, but we're paying for them out of surplus funds. We also went back and put the uh, funds that weren't mentioned, uh, and I think everybody assumed that they were supposed to be in there, but the SPLOS funds, the stormwater funds were not mentioned, and so this budget tonight puts those back in there. And it also restores the city salaries. Uh, all of our city employees will be getting a 1% raise. And so if you look at the bottom line of this proposed budget, uh, total expenditures are $10 million. $70,201 and the original budget as proposed by staff was $10,156,813. Um, the difference in that $100,000 is basically the stormwater money, which is still a question mark, the $99,000 for stormwater money. Uh, but everything else that was originally proposed for sta by staff and that we had a first reading on and that we had public hearings on is back in this budget. It's just the way that it's funded with those LCI project and the pavilion repairs will now be coming from prior year surpluses instead of from this year's uh, tax revenue. Uh, so this was. Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. correction. Mm -hmm. that, that's not absolutely correct. The $100,000 difference is, uh, you're correct about the stormwater, but there's also, uh, I'm not sure the number, but 400 and uh, four hundred and forty-two thousand dollars that have now been taken uh, away from the tax line item and brought in from previous funds. So even though there's a hundred thousand dollars difference, there's a five hundred thousand dollars difference in taxes received. Right, that's what I just said. That that money is still in there, but now it's being paid from prior year surplus instead of the tax money. Correct. Is that okay? Um, so we haven't changed anything. We're not trying to pull a fast one on anybody. We want to make sure everyone has had an opportunity to see the budget, and it is essentially the same as what staff proposed um, back beginning in, uh, in April. Uh, I think that 
staff has done a fine job last week of pulling this together and I would like to thank uh, Ms. Burke and the chief and Mr. Powell I know you were on vacation uh, for doing this and also council um, for doing what's right for the city and going forward and, and trying to fix this problem before uh, we got any further along so with that if anyone has any questions I know it's all now as clear as mud uh, but if the public has any questions or comments we will entertain those at this time And I will call the question all those in favor of adoption of the fiscal year 2013 ordinance uh, as proposed by exhibit a signify by raising your right hand that's um, oh, sorry, exhibit a. Exhibit, that is six in favor all those opposed that is zero opposed so the budget is approved um, that then brings us now to consideration and action on a resolution.